Hi guys, thanks for your interest in my new video. This is the second video in my series about the Zeiss Icon Contaflex Pro Tessor Set Lenses from Carl Zeiss, which I have adapted to the Sony e-Bayonet. In today's video I will show you the mechanical and optical quality of the Zeiss Icon Contaflex, Carl Zeiss 4.0 35mm Pro Tessor, which I used on a Sony A7R4. If you want to know more about the adapter and the general use of these lenses on the E-mount, check out my first video in this series. In the upper right corner of this video you will find a direct link to this video. Of course I would be very happy about a like from you. Please also subscribe to my channel and activate the bell, because that way you can support my work for you and you won't miss any of my new videos. Thank you very much for that. The Pro Tessor 4.0 35mm has the shortest focal length of the Pro Tessor lens series. Another 35mm in the series offers a higher speed of 3.2, I will present this in another video. Each of the Pro Tessor lenses is made of metal and glass. There is no built-in helicoid or aperture. These are located in the focusable rear lens group of the Contaflex cameras built for analog photography, or in the adapter used here. Because of this design, the lenses are extremely rugged and seem to be built to last. I love the look and feel of these lenses. The 4.0 35mm lens shown here, which was released in 1956, has the following approximate specifications. It weighs 236 grams, is 6.5 centimeters long, and has a maximum diameter of 6 centimeters. Screw and filters of size 49mm can be used. Due to its interchangeable front cell design, the filter thread does not rotate during focusing. A well-known weakness of many older lenses is the separation of the lens groups. Even the Carl Zeiss Pro Tessers are not protected from this, and my 4.035 mm is affected as well. But what is group separation? Lenses consist of individual elements that are either arranged freestanding and, or combined into groups. Hence the exemplary designation 7 elements arranged in 6 groups. Lens putty is used to connect the individual elements to form a group. This putty, which holds the elements together, tends to fail at the edges. The result is a visible effect that looks like oil on water. Separation is more of an aesthetic problem, unless the putty has completely dissolved and no longer holds the individual elements together. Here you can see the aperture setting. Note that the initial aperture of this lens is f4. A setting of f2.8 on the aperture ring behaves like an effective f4 in terms of light transmission and depth of field. A setting of f4 behaves like f5.6, and so on. Because your Sony camera has internal metering, you do not need to use exposure compensation. To read the depth of field, you need to set the distance using this rotating scale. No problem with the analog camera, because the distance is displayed in meters or feet on the helicoid. Watch my first video in the series on the Carl Zeiss Pro Tessar lenses to learn more. What can I say about the optical quality? I'll start by showing you unprocessed RAW files. The lens calculation is from the 50s of the last century and I use the lens on a 60 megapixel camera, the Sony A7R4. It performs surprisingly well. However, the sharpness at full aperture is not satisfactory across the entire image field, and the corners of the image stand out again, unfortunately not in a positive way. It looks better stopped down one stop. A significant increase in performance can be seen at f8, although the image corners are not sharp even at f11. Maximum image quality is achieved at f stops 11 and 16. Stopping down further to f22 or f32 results in significantly worse performance due to diffraction blur. If the corners of the image are unimportant, outside the depth of field, and you are only focusing on the center of the image, you can use the lens without hesitation from an aperture of 5.6, better 8. Distortion is corrected very well, so post-processing is rarely necessary. Unfortunately, I was not able to achieve aperture stars with this lens, but depending on the lighting situation, I was able to achieve a soap bubble bokeh.
Depending on the subject, vignetting is clearly visible. Even at f-stop 11, it is still visible and requires software correction if it is perceived as distracting. As always in my lens review videos, I would like to show you edited images. Decide for yourself if the quality is good enough for you. I myself will continue to shoot with these Pro Tessar lenses and enjoy the look, the build quality and of course the optical quality. Thanks again for your time, stay healthy and see you in the next video.